me tell you about my studio. And by studio, I mean bedroom. <laughs> it's not an actual recording studio, but I think that's probably the reality for a lot of us. And uh, yeah, I just finished that movie I was working on, and I have some time. So the first thing that I am doing with uh, the channel is cleaning the space. It's kind of just an area that I just store things in when I'm working. But uh, I've cleaned it, and I just wanted to show you around. And in the process, we could talk about what videos are coming up, because I really want to get your opinion on what you want to see, because I can make, there's no rules, we can make whatever we want here. Um, so I want to hear your opinions on uh, what you want to hear more about, what you're interested in. We'll just go around the room, we'll hang out and talk about what's in here, and uh, you can tell me what you want to learn about, and we'll just hang out and talk about bass, and it'll be fun. So, first up, uh, here's the, the flip top. But I love this amplifier, and I think it sounds good. Here's the, uh, the the Nash Jazz Bass. I bought this years ago from my friend Robbie. If you don't know about Nash, Nash basically makes instruments, guitars, and basses to, to specific years and eras. So this is a bass that was made in 2009, but it plays and looks and feels like a 1963 jazz bass. Um, and I love it. It sounds great. We haven't done a jazz bass video. Maybe we should do a jazz bass video. So that could be fun to talk about. Here's the Moog. We've talked a little bit about this. We can talk more about synthesis. And uh, I mean, there's a whole world there. I don't know if we're interested in it. Which brings up an interesting point. I uh, Do you think of this as a bass channel or is this a music channel? Uh, because we could talk more about bass specific things or we could talk more about music things. I really like writing music and arranging music and talking about what makes music feel a certain way. Uh, so we could do more of that, or we could dig into more bass stuff. And speaking of bass stuff, I'm a pretty bad upright bass player. Bad, not in like the cool sense of bad, like literally bad. <laughs> but um, I know enough to get into trouble. I can, I can get around a little bit. But it's an important part of bass and bass history. So maybe we should do an upright video. Maybe I get some help with that. Uh, that's something that I want to do. We could talk about maybe some of the pros and cons of upright bass and the advantages and disadvantages of it. Um, definitely something that's worth talking about for bass players. Maybe you saw the giveaway through Sweetwater. Um, did with Rat's channel, which was super cool and fun. Basically, we gotta build a small pedal board on Rhett's live stream, and Sweetwater sent me some pedals. And you might laugh because I haven't put it together yet, but also, bear with me, I've been working like 70 or 80 hour weeks for the last three months, and I just finished. I have these pedals here, and uh, we could do a video of building a new pedal board, we could do some videos talking about each of the pedals. And they're not just bass pedals too. Some of them are like, like for, here, let me show you. But like, for example, some of these aren't bass specific pedals. Like this Night Sky is like a really powerful pedal that can do some crazy sound design stuff, which I'm interested in. So it could be cool to like run this through the piano and do some fun sound design sort of things. Um, so we could do a video with this. This is a rad fuzz pedal from JHS. We've got this color box, which is a preamp basically, that is kind of like a, a Neve pre. I'm really excited about this one. Uh, maybe if you saw Backstage Live, I used this compadre a lot on Backstage Live. This is a, uh, a spring reverb, a tremolo, and I'm kind of digging this. I'm gonna mess around with this on bass gives it this baritone sort of vibe. Um, there's no rules with pedals, right? You can use anything on anything. Uh, here's this uh, direct box from the MPEG. Um, yeah, this, this needs to be built. So these are options of videos and things that we could uh, we could talk about because this channel is I'm making these videos for you. So let me know what you're interested in. Uh, what else? We've got a U-Bass. Gonna do a U-Bass video here soon, potentially. Um, here's the semi hollow We did a semi hollow bass video already. What else? Uh, 
mystery base. Also got Thunder Funk, which is my amp that I use on the road most of the time. Uh, we've got these Aguilar 12-inch speakers. We also maybe maybe Rat would let us borrow uh, the amp we use for Backstage Live, which is the uh, the Ampeg V4. We could do a video on that. Talk about tube amps versus solid state. We could talk about amps, good beginner amps, or like Amp 101. This is 10 years of accumulation, tinkering and building and trading and selling and buying and it, it, comparison can be the thief of joy. It's easy to compare to other people that have more than you, which I do sometimes, or maybe you feel discouraged by this video. Uh, and then I just want to encourage you and say, just make music with what you have. Do the best you can with what you have. Try not to compare, which is something that I'm guilty of as well. Um, but I am thankful for the things that are in this room, and I want to share them with you, and I want to talk about uh, music and creativity. And I want to make this next batch of videos really special for you and, and something that you're excited about and uh, I'm excited about. If you want to support the channel, honestly, the best thing is to check out the course. I made a base course for you and the link is in, in the description. I've got some other exciting things coming up too, but more on that later. But I just want to say, welcome back. I'm back. I'm not going anywhere and I'm excited to make some more videos for you here soon. Oh, hi there. You stuck around towards the end of the video. I've been getting some requests to talk about how I make some of the original music I make that's on the channel. I wanted the background music for this video to sound like a, a pause menu in a video game. Like when you're like selecting your character or your items or something like that, that kind of like cheesy intermission sort of music, which kind of felt appropriate for this video showing you around the studio. So you'll notice I just have five layers. I like to keep just a few layers and I'll, it's just an A section and a B section. They're the same music. I just have layers coming and going to make them feel different. So I'll just let you hear it real quick. So here's the, um, here's the song. Simple uh, piano melody, bass and shaker to start with on the A section. On the B section, we have a string pad coming in and some percussive sort of sounds. And then back to the A section. Uh, so here's the, the melody. Just a MIDI grand piano, but I put on the vinyl plugin, which I really like. This is a free plugin, I think, by Isotope. You can make things sound kind of retro and warped and add some dust. So without it, it sounds like a piano, but with it, it gives it a little bit of a vibe. Here's the bass. That is a. Uh, our little Mustang base here, uh, which I just got back from Rhett. I was hanging out with Rhett for a few weeks. Uh, and then I just plugged it straight into the Apollo Twin. I love this interface. It's a, um, if you're not familiar, Universal Audio makes great stuff. They've made great hardware for a long time. And then in more recent years, they've made software emulations of their own hardware, and it's great. So if you're looking for an interface, uh, to get started recording, I would really strongly recommend the Apollo Twin. I'm not endorsed in any way by them, but uh, it's I think it's a good product. And I think as a bass player, you probably want to have at least two inputs uh, to start with so that you can record direct and potentially record a, a, a mic'd up cabinet. Then you can also grow into uh, some other things from there. You can start to record vocals. You can start to record stereo guitars or keyboards, or you can even do uh, two mics on drums and practice your d drum mic placement. So anyway, if you're trying to make a first step into recording, I'd recommend getting a good interface that has two inputs with good conversion. An example of that is the um, 
the Apollo Twin. I also used to use the uh, the Apogee Duet, which was great. Um, so anyway, back to the music stuff. So we've got um, the bass is uh, run through a uh, Neve 1073 plugin, and I like to boost when I'm using flat wound strings. I like to boost around three to four k. It kind of gives you some of that extra string clarity. You can hear uh, the compressor is working pretty hard. I'm not afraid of a compressor. I really like this uh, LA-2A. Kind of makes the bass notes blossom. And I wanted that to be like a nice big kind of upright feeling sort of bass sound. Just a shaker here. Sometimes all you need is a shaker. Sometimes when you're programming music that have that's fake, the drums can sound super lame, but the percussion can be fine. So I like doing minimal percussion sometimes. Uh, so that's the main parts, but then on the B section, remember we had these two parts come in. So the strings, this is a Mellotron pad. And uh, without all these plugins, that's what it sounds like. I like to add two tremolos sometimes, because it kind of one of them kind of gives vibrato, and then one of them kind of helps the note blossom. Uh, so I'm going to have like a measure of tremolo and it kind of makes the patty strings ebb and flow and feel a little more like real strings. Um, and then I'm running it through the same vinyl, which lo-fi's it a bit, and then I'm adding on this plate reverb. This is one of my favorite plugins, this little plate by Sound Toys. This is so awesome. They're an amazing company. They make great stuff. Um, it's like a desert island plugin for me right there. And then, uh, and then... The more creative, quirky sound, this block sound, is uh, that's like wood blocks, but I'm running it through. That's what it sounds like. Just <laughs> just that, but then I'm running it through the Devil Glock, which is a cool compressor made by Sound Toys. It's a very aggressive compressor in it gives it some grit and then I'm running it through crystallizer which is a weird plugin it's a lot of fun there's a lot of cool reverse echo sort of sounds and then running it through plate reverb now it feels like we're in some sort of like jungle and then everything together it's got this sort of a uh, quirky wholesome menu screen vibe and uh, yeah, that's that's the background music that I made. So let me know if you want more uh, that kind of stuff in videos. I like talking about the creative music stuff, but sometimes it's fun to talk about plugins and processing and all that too. I could go more deep into that if you want. Uh, but this little Easter egg for you, for those of you that were asking about how I make some of the songs. So thanks for hanging out. More videos are on the way.